Halo semuanya, nama saya Ando Vida Lopez dan selamat datang kembali di Bongkar! Di episode ini, kita akan membongkar Jaksel. Lebih tepatnya, anak Jaksel. Ini cuma foto Abnon Jaksel 2016. Kita gak ketemu gambar yang merepresentasikan anak Jaksel. Bukan! Ini thumbnail dari video kisah anak Jaksel-nya May I See. Ketika kita dengar Jaksel, kita langsung berpikir tentang orang-orang yang ngomong campur-campur. Like, I tuh gak understand Pancasila apa aja. Or, you know, which is literally basically gue gak ngerti yo. Nah, menurut gua, jokes Jaksel ini sebenarnya lahir dari kesadaran orang-orang akan permasalahan yang lebih besar di Indonesia. Jokes Jaksel bisa dibilang gejala dari penyakit sesungguhnya. Nah, kita mau coba bongkar permasalahan yang ada di balik jokes Jaksel. Kalian sadar kan bahwa ada pemuda-pemudi di Indonesia yang lebih nyaman ngomong bahasa Inggris daripada bahasa Indonesia? Mm -hmm. Gak cuma itu, beberapa dari mereka kelihatan kurang peduli, bahkan apatis sama Indonesia. Banyak dari mereka lebih mengerti permasalahan di luar negeri dan lebih mengikuti berita-berita internasional dibandingkan permasalahan dan berita tentang Indonesia. Mungkin kalian juga sadar bahwa secara umum mereka ini datang dari latar belakang keluarga yang privileged. Menariknya, mereka-mereka yang biasanya dicap privileged justru seringkali kesulitan untuk memahami dan terlibat dalam aktivitas atau gerakan sosial politik di Indonesia. Mungkin banyak kalian merasa bodoh amat. Ini bukan masalah gue. Tapi guys, kasih gue kesempatan untuk meyakinkan kalian kenapa ini masalah besar yang ngefek ke kita semua. Nah, karena kita juga ingin menjangkau you guys who are way more comfortable speaking in English. Episode bongkar kali ini akan menggunakan bahasa Inggris. So you better watch. Tapi jangan khawatir. Buat kalian yang gak bisa bahasa Inggris, episode ini akan ada subtitles. Anyway, di video ini juga akan ada kolaborator spesial yakni wadah yang mencoba menjangkau anak-anak tadi. What is up Indonesia? Atau singkatnya Wiwi. So without further ado, let's bongkar this shit. Let's go! one of the founders of WeWe to help me explain this episode. So please give a big round of applause for my co-host in this episode, Abigail! Yeah. Welcome Abigail, welcome Abigail! Yeah. Have a seat, have a seat. Thank you for coming to the set. Welcome to Bongkar. Thank you, thank you, Dov. Yeah, so that phenomenon you mentioned about how there's a lot of privileged Indonesians who feel more comfortable speaking English and have zero knowledge about Indonesia is so real. Mm. That is why WeWe was created, honestly. Okay, okay. But what is WeWe? Okay, WeWe is basically a platform where we summarize and translate Indonesian current social political issues in English and memes so that mm. English-speaking Indonesians can understand. WeWe was founded by me and Faye back in August 2020 mm. and now have seven writers, one meme lord, <laughs> <laughs> one lawyer, and one ex-KPK investigator. And of course, a bunch of WeWoos on our Discord server. Okay, you mentioned that WeWe was created mm -hmm. because there are a lot of English-speaking Indonesians that are ignorant. Yep. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I went to an international school and studied abroad for university. Basically one of those kids that you mentioned earlier. Mm. I used to be very ignorant too, by the way, but that's a whole nother story. In 2020, there were two major political events that happened. Mm. The first is when RUPKS, or Crimes of Sexual Violence Bill, did not make it to prolegnas list mm. or the priority bills yet again. And the second is George Floyd. Both are social political issues, both deal with institutionalized discrimination, but one happened in Indonesia and the other happened in the US. 
Guess which issue got the attention of all my international Indonesian friends? My social media timeline was filled with Black Lives Matter posts. My Indonesian friends were speaking out on their social media, donating money to Black Lives Matter Foundation, and even calling some people out for not speaking about it. It was, it was intense. Now, before y'all hate me, I'm not saying that speaking up against racism and supporting Black Lives Matter is bad, no. The problem is, when I asked some of them about RUPKS, almost all of them did not know. They did not know what RUPKS is, mm. what Prolegnas is, even how Indonesia back then still did not have a comprehensive law that deals with sexual violence. So they're giving their platform, voice, time, money to a social political issue that's happening halfway across the globe, but are completely oblivious to the ones happening in their own country. For me, that's ironic. Damn, these Jaxo kids. Okay, no, no, Andofi, huh? not all of these kids are Jaxo kids. Okay, okay. okay. Not, not all of them are oblivious to. Mm. I realize that there are different types of them. So we week have come up with these categories of international kids. Mm. First, the international kids get okay. Go to school in Indonesia, but have an international curriculum. Maybe IB kids, AP kids, basically me. You, right? That's you. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what are the next categories? So there, there's the abroad gang, Indonesian who study abroad, either for high school or uni or master or PhD, aka me. I'm yeah. Dovida Lopez. That's me. Yep. And then there's the diaspora gang. They live abroad, maybe have a non-Indonesian passport, usually move overseas mm. because of their parents. Okay. The mixed kids gang is okay. the next one. It can be all of the above, but they have mixed parents, so they kind of look like a foreigner, so they have a different experience. Mm. As you know, uh, Cinta Laura, mm. many other Indonesian artists. There's one more, there's one more. Okay. The, the I just think English is the coolest gang, you know? Yeah. Those who somehow internalize that the West is cooler, only watch Netflix and refuse to listen to Indo songs, you know? Mm. Who always try to flex at how Western and non-Indo they are. Aduh, I don't know any, I still don't know any Indo celebrity. Atau I nga ngikuti ngikutin gitu loh. I you know, aku nga tau Pancasila. Yep. If you know, you know. Yeah, anyway. Clearly, we're missing a few categories. Mm. Let us know in the comment section what other categories there are. Tag your friends. Tag yourself if you're one of these categories. However, for the sake of this episode, mm -hmm. we will be lumping all of you under one umbrella term. And you guys better like it. It took us 10 years of research and development to get this term. The Boule Nations. Now, how many Boule Nations do we have? Mm -hmm. Let's talk some sexy ass data. Mm. How many are studying abroad? Based on the global flow of tertiary level students issued by UNESCO Institute for Statistics 2022, the number of Indonesian students studying in other countries in 2022 is about 53,600. And Indonesia still leads with the most international schools in Southeast Asia with 192 international schools and it's ranked 10th place in global. Guys, a disclaimer. I have to acknowledge that just because you go to international schools or study abroad mm -hmm. does not mean that you are economically privileged. Mm -hmm. I know there are some Indonesians who got scholarships and for most cases they aren't in the economically privileged categories if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, both Faye and I were very frustrated at how uninformed some of these bullying Asians are. Mm. We have this hypothesis that these kids are ignorant and unaware not simply because they don't care, but because their Indonesian sucks. Mm. This language barrier hinders them from following the news and what's happening in Indonesia. Especially when some of the headlines look like this. You know how Indonesians love to abbreviate everything. Now it's nobody's fault. It's just the fact that you need some prerequisite knowledge and skills in order to read the Indonesian news. Like a decent Indonesian proficiency and maybe, you know, what? RUU, Permen, Perpes, Kemendikbud, Ristek, P2, TP2, African stands for. Something that many of these English-speaking Indonesians obviously don't know. So, we feel like there needs to be a more beginner-friendly and accessible information for them. Hence, we created WeWe. Wow! So, after two years of running WeWe, mm -hmm. what did you find out? 
Well, we found out that the problem actually lies way deeper than just language barrier, which was our hypothesis. There are various reasons that created this phenomenon, like the unintended consequence of economic and educational privilege, hopelessness due to corrupt institution, the fact that Indonesia can't hold dual citizenship, civics lessons. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Abigail, we don't have all the time to talk about all of this. Okay. So for the sake of this episode, let's only focus on the main one. Okay, what was it? Okay, the unintended consequence of the intersection between economic and education privilege. Abigail, what the f did you say? Okay, wait, wait, what? <laughs> okay, okay, let's dial it back a uh -huh, bit. Uh -huh. so, so first, what is privilege, right? When you hear privilege, most of you only think about money. Even though that is true, mm -hmm. there are other types of privileges. Education, race, age, able-bodied, beauty, religion, culture. Orang dalam. <laughs> Basically, privilege is an advantage or a special right available only to a particular person or group. Abigail, I'm still confused. So while you were talking, okay. I scoured the internet, scoured past the furries, the conspiracy theorists, the flat earthers, the angry Twitter mob, and the sims. Okay? And I found the perfect privilege test. Privilege test? Yes, so let's play our favorite game of How Privileged Are You? I want you all at home to take this test. But first, I'll take this test. Let's see. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Ethnicity is Indonesian minus 75. Okay, okay. Yeah, my 75. Yes. Oh, wow. That's sad. Okay. okay. Christian. Okay. Wow. Oh. Okay. Domicile, Jakarta, urban plus 75. Okay, yeah, you so dear man, yo. Uh, okay. Uh status, my income per month, rich. Oh. Uh, so, so I'm I am i am plus one hundred. I'm plus one hundred. Okay. Profession, artist. Plus fifty. Plus fifty. Okay. Education. Mm. Bachelor. So I'm a plus ten. Ah, this one. Attractiveness. Oh, clearly. Clearly Minus I'm Minus 85. Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah. no, I, I'm clearly. Minus 80, yeah, minus yeah, yeah, 90, okay. Minus 90. <laughs> okay. Orientation, straight. Plus 10, you know, straight. Sex, male, I mean, clearly. So, plus 10. And when you add up the score, it becomes drum roll. Plus 85? Whoa. What? So according to this test, I'm non-privileged? What? I'm non-privileged. It's okay. It's okay. Here and you I get a award? It's okay. Ternyata okay. not privileged. Okay, wow. Okay, I gotta put this, I gotta put this award here. This bomb card non-privileged award. Okay? But all jokes aside, Abigail. Mm -hmm. All jokes aside, guys. Real talk. Guys, I have privilege. And I acknowledge. This test clearly does not encompass all the aspects of privilege, such as age, language, which school you went to, mm -hmm. who your parents are, and many other factors. And clearly, this arbitrary setting of numbers that this test has mm -hmm. does not reflect accurately on how privileged you are. Thus, we need to have a more open, honest, and nuanced discourse on privilege. That way, the talk won't just be about pointing fingers, ah, dasar lu privileged, diem aja bacot, right? And feeling guilty or being jealous, but actually productive towards something. Not to mention, privilege applies differently in different contexts. Mm. For example, if you want to work for the government, maybe who your parents are mm. will be more important than where you go to school. But if you want to be a published researcher, where you go to school will probably be more important than who your parents are. Context matters. That's true though, because in certain contexts, certain privileges are actually not advantageous. And this is what happened to those Bulanesians, right? Those who have economic privilege can afford to send their kids to international schools and or abroad. Basically the type of education that a lot of people in general perceive to be better. Mm. And some are, undoubtedly. Now, these kids who go to international schools and study abroad, like me, most of which are English speaking, spend most of their formative years learning, speaking, and writing in English. Yes. Many of our parents also speak to us in English predominantly at home. My parents taught me English ever since I was a baby. Mm. So I learned English and Indonesian at the same time. 
thus we feel more comfortable digesting information and expressing ourselves in English. Mm. Most can't even speak or understand Bahasa Indonesia very well. Now there's this quote, in general, around 70% of Indonesian students in an international school are not fluent in Bahasa Indonesia. Well, that used to be me. Mm. Now guys, don't get us wrong. It's not like these international school kids do not learn anything in Indonesian. Yep. Now, according to our Education and Culture Ministerial Regulation Number 31, 2014, mm -hmm. international schools in Indonesia are required to have both Bahasa Indonesia and PPKN or Civics class. Yep. And they do, but it's still a small portion of their English-speaking curriculum. And personally, for me, it's mostly propaganda. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so even though economic and education privilege advantages them in many aspects in the Indonesian cultural context, just through mm. their English-speaking proficiency disadvantages them in understanding and participating in Indonesian social political discourse, which leads to ignorance and apathy. This is what I mean by the unintended consequence of the intersection between economic and education privilege. Can you taste that sweet, sweet irony in the air? Indonesians who cannot understand Indonesian news because they are in Bahasa Indonesia. Wow. Yeah. But I wonder, okay? okay. What happens when they actually do try? Ah, those Bulanesians who try to participate in public discourse sometimes get bullied. Mm. There are several reasons why they get bullied, right? First, due to their limited knowledge and sheltered upbringing that we talked about earlier. Let's be honest, they do say some dumb mm, but, yeah. but they're trying, they're yeah. trying, right? But because what they say lacks accurate information and context, they get bullied. Mm. Which further disincentivize them from learning. Second, just for the mere fact that they see privilege. Mm. Either from appearing rich or from speaking in English, they automatically get discredited. Now, this is a logical fallacy called ad hominem. Now, there's a lot of reason why this happens. A lot. But let's focus on the English speaking part. On the one hand, we have these Bulanesians who think that the West is so cool and are more comfortable speaking in English, making them ignorant towards Indonesia. Mm. On the other hand, some of those who try get backlash, mm. which further disincentivizes them. Do you realize that this is actually two sides of the same coin? And it all stems from the effect of post-colonialism. As we all know, all of our problems can be traced back to post-colonialism. Yep. Yeah, look at this meme. Beautiful. But what is post-colonialism? This. Look at this long-ass definition, okay? Basically, it is generally understood as the after-effects and aftermath of Western colonialism. Mm. Now, it needs to be taken into account that post-colonialism has different effects on different layers of society. Mm. While the more privileged Indonesians feel they are inferior to their European counterparts and therefore attempt to imitate them, lower classes resent these foreigners since they are thought to be the enemies of the culture. This isn't just an abstract concept, but it is actually built in the society through a legal structure known as penggolongan penduduk pribumi dan non pribumi. This segregation has a long-lasting repercussion that we are still feeling until today. It provided education for specific classes of people such as Indonesian nobles and European, but not for the common Indonesian. This education segregation was possible because the Dutch indicated on every single birth certificate which categories you're in based on your ethnicity. And only certain categories are allowed to access good quality education. While this education segregation was abolished in 1966, the indication of categories itself was only abolished in 2007. The cultural and social repercussions still linger in Indonesian society today. How? Well, those Bulanesians that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. who subconsciously internalized that the West is the best, how it's so cool to watch Stranger Things and The Boys Season 3 and not know anything about Pancasila, but also the bullying and backlash these Bulanesians get from society when they try to participate. Mm. This is due to a thing called nativism, aka an aversion to things that are considered foreign. In post-colonial society, there's usually still a subconscious mentality of nativism 
making anyone who exhibits any kind of foreignness to be ostracized or alienated for not being native enough. Okay? Or in this context, not being Indonesian enough. Even though they are native. This post-colonial mindset furthers the Bulanesian sense of alienation and hence a feeling of detachment towards Indonesia. And this feeling of detachment demotivates them from learning and participating in Indonesian discourse and incentivizes them to follow the global news instead. Okay, since we've established that this phenomenon happened in a way as a consequence of post-colonialism, let's go further back mm. to the colonial period. Yes, because after all the things that we have been talking about, some of you Bulanesians may be thinking, Oh, like you said, Andovi, Indonesians don't like us. We're not Indonesian enough. Why should we care? I don't think people like us are even relevant to Indonesia. Well, f because historically speaking, some of our founding fathers are a lot like you. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Do you know that our founding fathers were actually international youth? Yeah, I said it. The whole Sumpah Pemuda conference was conducted in the Dutch language. Wow. This was because most of them were Dutch educated. Wow. So they learned in Dutch. Mm -hmm. And therefore their cognitive process worked better and more comprehensively in Dutch. Their ideas were more easily expressed and communicated in the Dutch language. Ah, sounds familiar. I know that's how most of you Bulan Asians feel, right? It's so hard to speak in Indonesian because you think in English. So even in our history, people like you are an integral part of Indonesia. Mm. It's been tried, it's been tested, and it's been proven. So you don't have to prove how Indonesian you are because everybody in Indonesia has a role. Okay, gue dan Abigail dari tadi udah ngomong banyak banget. Dan sekarang lu mungkin mikir, do, gue gak peduli. <laughs> gue pengen ngetawain mereka aja. Mereka kan privileged. Ngapain gue simpati sama mereka? Mm. Pertama, Oke, okay, gua udah jelasin masalah privilege panjang-panjang sampai main game segala, masih aja lu. Tapi nggak apa-apa, gua akan tetap kasih tahu lu kenapa harus peduli. Oke, okay? suka nggak suka kita tinggal di negara demokrasi. Hak suara anak-anak bule nations ini juga akan mempengaruhi kehidupan kalian. Mereka punya vote untuk presiden, caleg, kepala daerah. Artinya, kalau ada sekumpulan orang yang ngevote menggunakan suara mereka, hmm. tapi mereka nggak tahu apa-apa tentang Indonesia, lu bakal terdampak. Kedua, yang paling penting nih, kalian semua kan suka komplain mereka privilege, mereka kaya. Benar. Hmm. Tapi bayangin kalau kekayaan dan privilege mereka dipakai untuk kepentingan Indonesia. Ini akan sangat berpengaruh ke kita semua. Dan anak-anak ini, ya sebenarnya mereka yang punya waktu. Benar. Hmm. Punya waktu, uang, dan tenaga. Hmm. Dan mereka banyak yang pengen kontribusi tapi nggak ngerti. Karena mereka bingung mau nyumbang duit dan atau waktu mereka. Kemana? Ah. And as for you, Bulanesians, we all know about you who make initiatives and acts of activism. Mm. Some are amazing, thank you for that. But sadly, there are also some who are misguided and a little bit tone deaf because of their lack of understanding. If you are informed, right, the probability that your contribution will create impact would be higher. Some of you may say, so what if I don't care? Isn't it my right not to care? Also, Andovi said that I have resources that may benefit others, mm. Indonesia, but what's in it for me? Mm. I don't want to use my resources for you, maybe. Well, I used to think that way too. But I changed because I realized that we live in a democracy, which means that we get to negotiate the rules of the game we live by together. Hence, by not participating in politics, it's as if we're handing the steering wheel to other people and then complain when it doesn't go our way. Mm. I also realized that politics has a real tangible effects on our lives. How expensive our alcohol will be. Can the state intervene in our family affairs? Mm. Can you show PDA with your boyfriend or girlfriend in public? Will there be cool music festivals? Those are all politics. Politics matters, so I want to have a say, even if it's just by joining in the conversation. And speaking about politics that matter, Don't you realize that some of you Bulanesians, due to your socio-economic privilege, mm. actually have access to the room where it happens. The room where it happens. Exactly. 
<laughs> Some of you have access to the room where it happens. Yes. And if you are still not convinced that your contribution matters, let me give you a real life example, okay? Oui, oui. Abigail, I know you won't say it, but let me say it for you, okay? I'll say it for you, okay? Look at the impact of what WeWe oui, oui has done. Look at all this. Look at all these testimonies. So for those Bulanesians who think that you don't matter, you clearly do. Okay, thank you for the kind words, but though we, 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 we are still a work in progress, right? We still have a lot to learn. Abigail, me too. Yeah. Now look, okay? We know that we didn't touch upon many reasons, and in a lot of cases as well, okay? Mm -hmm. As we, we always say in their posts, we are prone to bias and error. Mm -hmm. This is a complicated issue in which we oversimplify. Yep. Please do your own research. Please. There are of course outliers or privileged kids who don't have these problems. Yep. Or English-speaking individuals who don't come from a privileged background. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are aware. <laughs> and I hope you know that we didn't make this episode to point fingers or blame anyone or further segregate our nation. Mm -hmm. This is a real phenomenon, a real problem with real consequences and we need to understand why it happens. Mm -hmm. So for you Bulanesians who don't give a sh**, we get it. We know why you are like this, okay? And it's not entirely your fault, yes. But I hope that you would reconsider your apathy. But hey, in the end, we can't force you to care. No. So it's up to you. Yeah, and for you, the Bulanesians who do care, used to care or are trying mm. those who feel excluded or feel like indonesia doesn't accept you. i've been there i get it things can definitely be better sometimes our apathy is actually a defense mechanism mm. because we care too much also but you're not alone and i urge you to please continue to learn learn about our country the problem it faces the problematic bills that the government's trying to pass <coughs> 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 Learn Bahasa Indonesia. Yes. If you are not proficient, in the end, you have the resources, so you get to be better. Dan kalian yang mungkin selama ini kesel ngeliat anak-anak Indo sok bule jaksel yang ignorant, oke? Okay? Gua berharap episode ini kasih kalian pengertian bahwa permasalahan ini tuh sebenarnya jauh lebih dalam dan kompleks dari yang kita kira. Dan iya, iya, emang banyak yang sombong, banyak yang nyebelin. Yep. Tapi gua berharap kalian sadar bahwa enggak semua kayak gitu. Masih ada yang nyoba, masih ada yang pengen ikutan bikin Indonesia lebih baik. Hmm. Tetapi, mereka mungkin butuh sedikit bantuan dari kalian buat lebih paham soal Indonesia. Ya. Intinya, di negara demokrasi Indonesia ini, kita perlu semua orang baik dan kompeten yang mau bantu Indonesia buat bisa membantu. Hmm. Karena dengan itu, secara kolektif, hmm. kita akan sama-sama maju. Jadi ayolah jangan sampai Bineka Tunggal Ika jadi sekedar slogan. Hmm. Keberagaman itu macam-macam, termasuk keberagaman edukasi, perspektif, dan tingkat pengertian. So we all know Indonesia needs literally all the help it can get. So guys, whoever we think we are as Indonesians, whether we feel privileged or not, we have to be more aware and more active about our country's social political issues, mm -hmm. even to participate and contribute. Anyway, do you still remember the one thing that you mentioned earlier about how international kids were so aware oh and speaking about, about social political issues that happen halfway across the globe? Yep. And how they do their activism in a very unique and creative, unique, albeit westernized way. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Such as... Uh, Writing fan fiction. Mm, there you go. Um, singing Imagine. Right. Uh, slam poetry. Slam poetry. Yeah. And, and many others. Now, we want you to write in the comment section below what are some of the most unique Bulanesian <laughs> activism that you have seen some of your friends attempt. Yep. Comment. And the top comment will be recreated by me to speak out against Erkawa. <laughs> My name is Ando Vida Lopez. My name is Abigail Limuria. And for once in your goddamn life, don't be so giant and share this on your main account, not your second account where you post all your party and drinking pics. Peace out.